everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Disc Golf Answer Man. I am Bobby Cool, Daddy Slick Breeze. You've gotten way better with the breeze lately. The breeze? breeze? Yep. And I have with me Eric. Why'd so. you bring the snow, McKay? Oh, what the heck, dude? Man. I thought he was you had a the, long drive. I thought he was bringing the heat. Oh. It was, I do bring the heat. Yeah, that's right. It was miserable. It was miserable. It was absolutely miserable. And further down the table, all the way on the other side, we have with us Robert. For some reason, is super excited to talk about PDJ ratings, McCall. I'm not. I didn't bring it oh, up. Oh, I could see it. I didn't bring it I up. I could see it in your face, though. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. You had that look like someone said it, so now I'm going to embellish in it. Okay. First of all, <laughs> you're really bad at reading my facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that it's got the hair back, it is kind of hard That's to read right. your facial That's right. I covered so. it up some. So back to Eric. Eric, so, you, you went out on, uh, of course, on holiday. Location. On, on location. <laughs> you went out on holiday vacation to spend some time with friends and family, but yeah, you drove back to Emporia, Kansas, and it was snowing. And I looked it up. You said the town you came from usually takes, what, about an hour? Not even. And it took you three hours. Yes. Because we got hit hard with a snowstorm. We did. And, uh, well, we were driving back from Texas on Sunday morning. We left a little early Sunday, and everything was going great. Yeah. It was super windy. So that was a little rough in the uh, the old element. But as um, soon as we got to the Cassidy exit on I-35, cars were starting to be in the ditch. The weather started getting worse. And then we got off and got gas at the last spot. And then as soon as we got back on the highway, we drove about half a mile down the road and standstill traffic. A uh, An 18-wheeler had jackknifed. Oh, whoa. And another one ran into it. So it was just one of those. We, we sat there for ever, an hour and a half. We sat. Not moving. Didn't move for an hour and a half. And the worst part, the absolute worst part, is we were in a dead zone. So we couldn't even use our phones. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So luckily, I had my iPad with a movie downloaded on it from Netflix. Oh, nice. So we propped it up on the, the is dash. Is it one of the Star watched. Wars movies? It was not. Oh. It, I do had those on there as well, but oh, okay. this, this, I don't even remember the name of it. It was an awful movie. It was uh, some Kevin James movie. Oh, uh, where he, uh, he writes the, the book. Guy? No, yeah, yeah. He writes a, writes a book about being an international. Yes. That oh, movie yes. Was awful. awful. Yeah. Yes. Paul yeah. Blart, Mark Malkop. No, no, right? no. Oh, I'm the, joking. The, the, <laughs> oh, okay. It was called the, the, the assassinator. Or assass- assass- yeah. Something, something like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember it was on the Netflix. Assassinator? And I, <laughs> something like that. And I remember watching it starting out and I was like, what is this? Yeah. Is this a joke? It and was it, weird. And it kept going and I was like, this is dumb. But it was it was better than the alternative, which was nothing. Right? Yeah, which was so. the back of the semi. So did you get to play any disc golf while you're out in Tejas? Yes, we uh, actually I drove down to uh, Austin area and walked a piece of property and met with the city down there about a potential design, uh, and then went to Waco on our way back and played the Beast. Nice. So Denise and I and uh, Ralph and Maverick all enjoyed a round at the Beast. Nice. That place is so much fun. I love it. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's it's tough. It, it's it. I think personally, it's more fun casually than it is in tournament play. Yeah. Because if you shank one into the woods, yeah, whatever. Just ah, throw whatever. another Bring one. Bring it out. Yeah. yeah. It, so, but no. And there was only like a handful of people there, and I had taken out of my stash from home three Emac Truths to stash because I, I assume I mean, it was going to be in the seventies the whole week. I was going to be down mm-hmm. there, so I thought I'm going to play some disc golf. No, I didn't. So I, I actually ended up stashing three Emacs in Waco. Nice. So wow. Yeah. So Robert, you also went down to Tejas. That's right. Shay and I went down and spent some time with my family in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did a traditional Thanksgiving meal there, turkey and uh, dressing and all that stuff. That was awesome. Stayed with uh, stayed with my brother. That was super fun. And then we drove over to Junction, Texas, where Shay's parents live. Um, it was I don't know five and a half hours over that way. Uh, did another traditional meal with them. I was I was not sad. No, I, I love that's awesome. I love Thanksgiving. Did Let's, you, I, dude, I'll eat turkey and dressing at, all day, every day. All day, every day. I love it. Did you get to play any disc golf? No disc golf. None. I did, no, I honestly didn't even, even chance to. I didn't even bring my bag with me. Wow. No. But Houston, I mean, where would you? I guess I, there's, I there's a couple courses in Houston that you can go hit up. I could have played in Houston, but I just knew like we were only going to spend basically a day and a half with my family and then two days with hers, and so. In Houston, I didn't really think it would be viable. And then in Junction, the uh, disc golf course um, got flooded and is just like the course, the uh, park is totally closed because it's like in shambles. Like, uh, oh, yeah. There's yeah, an yeah, RV yeah. park nearby that still has debris out on the course. 
So it's totally closed off. So no disc golf for me at all. Well, I spent some time in Oklahoma. I could spend time with uh, my brother's family. That was really cool. Watched football, ate turkey, played. And then the kids went and played basketball. And I played some basketball. And that was pretty fun. And Did then you dunk they, on them? Yes, actually. I got a little aggressive. And they were like 15-year-old. And I'm like, at one point, we were, me and a, it sounds so awful. But so it was me, my brother, uh, two of my cousins, my cousins, my nephews, and then uh my brother's niece and then her friend who play they play basketball and they're like 15 16 years old and we're all you know everybody's you know, like kind of play, having fun but really getting into it and i mm-hmm. there was the ball was bouncing in the middle and i was going forward and the other girl was going forward and we just collided and boom and of course i outweighed the girl by a lot and i just like i, I felt bad but i was like man this is we're, <laughs> we're, Dude, we're i'm trying we're to win playing though. right yeah. yeah so anyway um then i got to I respect pl- that i actually got to play disc golf i, I saw, saw that at blackhawk Yep. Yeah. And I played some, uh, uh, what do they call it? Skins match. Uh, nice. They do that every year. Every, don't they? every Thanksgiving and Christmas. Every, yeah. Every day after Thanksgiving, every day after Christmas and every day uh, New Year's after day. New Year's. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, I want to go to, to the other ones too, but it's just a fun, it's just cool. How relax. many people came out? I think ended up being 67. Wow. Um, and you, there's a $20 division, $40 and a $100 division. And you got in a hundred dollar division. <laughs> Heck right. yeah. Let's I got in the go. $20 division. I almost won skins three times and screwed it up. Uh, is it, is not it not like uh, real close, but I was like, you know, cause I, I don't expect you weren't okay. You weren't one of the guys that like, you got to make this putt to push and you missed, did you one time? Oh, did everybody no, get no, mad no. at you? No, one time I was able to to save it. Oh, okay. And I and I was able to push it, but no, there wasn't a time where it's like either make it or, or yeah. I'm screwed. No. Um, but it was it was fun. Had a good time seeing a bunch of uh people from Oklahoma that I knew from disc golf. So nice. that's, good time, that's awesome. So. All right, cool. Good catching up. You guys ready to get into some disc golf questions? Let's talk disc golf. Let's talk some disc golf. Remember, guys, you can go to discgolfanswerman.com, submit your disc golf questions. We will get them on the air. A quick note on the disc golf Google Forms. I don't know any other better way to do this, guys, because right now we're sitting at 105 questions. Um, I know a lot of you guys are being real patient. I appreciate that. But I think we're going we're gonna to try something new for 2019 or at least leading up to 2019. Since we only got about a month left. I'm going to go through the questions one time, and I'm going to delete ones that are kind of redundant and maybe are less. Sometimes you guys, which I think is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I think it's so awesome that you guys ask questions about us and different things. But I'm going to concentrate more on the questions that are like, have a tip, you know, because a lot of people call in or, or we'll get a question, we'll send in a question and they'll just be like, make a comment on something or mm-hmm. it doesn't really warrant like us answering. Sure. So we're going to kind of filter through those. So, um, but I do appreciate you guys communicating, connecting with us, but you can connect even better with us on the Disc Golf Management Facebook group um, where we can have kind of a back and forth chit chat type thing. Um, so anyway, so let's get into the question. This first one's for Cooper. It's on form. I have a... I am a very forehand slash backhand friendly player, but am having trouble developing a touch forehand. I've been flipping over everything less than a fast overstable fairway driver. I was wondering if you guys had any tips for developing a touch forehand or maybe even a disc recommendation for me to try. Nice. Touch forehands are probably the hardest forehand to learn. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. What do you throw for touch forehands? Um, if I'm trying to keep the disc pretty straight, I'll throw like an Explorer or something like that. Um, just nice and smooth. And mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that I worked on a lot was <clears throat> starting that on Heiser and then just letting it um, flip up. Yeah. Yeah. Letting it work on its own. Um, if I'm in the woods, though, uh, I'll throw a Maverick on forehand sometimes just mm-hmm. really, really soft. And then uh, I really like throwing um, my anvil for forehands a lot, but that's not touch as much as it is just like an overstable approach disc. Personally. Yeah. So. Uh, to me personally, when I think of touch forehands, it's more of a shorter, like mid range, got to get mm-hmm. around the corner. Sure. The only time I'm throwing a touch forehand like that is if I absolutely have to go right. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I'm just throwing like a putter. Yep. Yeah. I mean, maybe a I, suspect to be a good choice for me sure. on, on those touch little touch forehands. Sure. I'll throw a Cenus for that sometimes. Um, and then if I'm throwing a mid for that, I've got a lucid X verdict that I like, mm-hmm. um, or just honestly, I'll throw an Emac truth if I need it to go super duper straight and I don't have to throw it. hard. Yes. I'll do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, next one comes from Daniel. Are there any standard disc golf pro tips for better technique or improving your game that are repeated to beginners that you do not agree with personally? Oh, wow. Such as your reach back and pull through should be on a flat plane. 
do more field work than playing around on the course, et cetera. So is there any piece of advice that you hear a lot of that you don't think is actually really good advice hmm. for beginners? That's a good question. Um, I don't necessarily hear anything like, wow, that's horrible advice. Unless they're saying like, hey, you guys should go out and get like high speed drivers and, right, and right. stuff. But you don't really hear that. No. I do think there are some people who focus too much on playing putter only rounds for, for too long. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's good to learn and it's a, it's a good tool to mix in, but I would definitely encourage you like start off with a putter and a mid range, learn the difference between the two, learn when to use them. Um, and then you can kind of just step up from there because the end goal obviously is to uh, be able to throw all sorts of discs. Right. And so if you're really good at throwing putters, that's awesome. But a lot of times that'll, that can cause some nose angle issues. Um, if that's the only thing that you're used to throwing, if you're not used to getting that edge down or whatever. Correct. So I, I I'd say that's the only one that I hear that I think don't do it forever. Definitely play lots of putter only rounds. Cause that's awesome. Just don't do them exclusively. Yeah. I, I push for more mid range, mid range only mm -hmm. rounds over putter only rounds. Sure. Uh, curious am asks, Hey, disc golf answer man crew. This is a question about the mid ranges. Nice. I'm curious about any tips for driving with mid ranges, uh, and practicing the mid range game in general. My go-to mid range is the Emac truth solid, which I can throw 250 feet, 350 feet internet distance. Nice. Guy, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you clarified from, <laughs> from a stand, Good to know. Yeah. From a standstill, but I seem to struggle with the release on attempted drives or with any run up when throwing my mid ranges. Any advice? Mm -hmm is greatly appreciated. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I would do anything different than your normal drive. Maybe, maybe the only thing I can think of is slow it down a little bit as opposed to slow if you're trying to rip down. on a new edition. Mm. Watch out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nailed it. Listen to some of that on the way home. <laughs> um, you know, your normal drive, you're kind of putting a lot more power and a little more aggression into is where if you do that with mid ranges too much, especially the Emac, if you put a lot of power behind it, flat it's probably going to flip over yeah it's probably going to turn to the right and not get the the results that you're hoping to get uh that's why i i've always i've always said that the emac is is best thrown around 80 percent for me that's yeah. usually when i get the best results out of that disc mm -hmm. so you know just kind of slowing everything down on the t as opposed to um trying to force it almost yeah and I think there's something to like, th there's a difference in mentality between throwing from the tee pad and throwing from the middle of the fairway. Absolutely. And, and I don't know why, but for me, I, I especially feel that on forehands. If I'm standing on the tee with a forehand, mm -hmm. I'm like, eh, I'm scared. I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know. But then Just it, throw it, a turnover. It, yeah, right. <laughs> but if I have to throw one on a hole, most of the time, if I'm in the middle of the fairway, it, it goes fine. Yep. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what that difference is. I would, I'd go with the same as you slow down and maybe try to visualize that, you're not really standing on the tee pad. This isn't the first shot of the hole. It's just a shot. Mm -hmm. So you don't, maybe you don't put so much pressure on it. Yeah. Something like I that. I agree with that. Excellent. All right, guys, if you are listening, uh, turn down your volume. I think I have it figured out, but I'm going to plug something in. If you, you don't, I want you to turn it off, but turn it down. Oh, no, oh, I think we're good. Let's see if this worked. Hold on just a second. We are going to see if we can listen to some speak pipe. Hold on. This one's from Timothy. How's it going, DGAM fam? Timothy Allen Alenko again. And today Hello. I wanted to know which number system you guys dislike more. <laughs> PDGA rating system oh, or nice. flight numbers? Mm. Ooh, that's a good question. Which one do we dislike the most? I dislike them both equally. <laughs> I just, I just hate numbers in general. Yeah, I've heard I've heard math never did anything good for anyone. No. That's just what I've heard. No. It's word on the street. I just use my calculator when I need it. <laughs> calculator app. <laughs> but they don't that doesn't that has numbers though, so inherently it does. it's bad. It is bad. <laughs> but it came with the phone, so well, yeah. what are you gonna Could, do? You couldn't delete it. No. Uh I would say I dislike flight numbers more just because they are I think more subjective. Um though, you know, you could argue ratings are pretty darn subjective and depends on the tournaments that you play. Um, Fact. They, they both are imperfect systems, but they are what we have. So we work with them as best we can. I think that's what I would go with. There you go. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. All right. Next question comes from, that's the same one I had just up previously. 
I Adam item Adam from I uh, item from Ottawa. Yeah, words. <laughs> Adam from Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> Uh, he says, hello, disc golf answer man. Please enlighten me. Yes. Well, you've come the, to the right place. <laughs> right. <laughs> For the pros and cons of super soft putter and the pros and cons of a hard putter. Okay. Compare well, seeing how the super soft putter is now. So the con O-O-P, is. Yeah. The con is. <laughs> to get they're hooked harder on to find. them. Yeah. You can't get them. Right. <laughs> For the sake of his argument, let's just say soft. Okay. Soft. Um. You know, there's there's really not a whole lot of difference. You'll get minimal flight changes out of the two. Um, for me personally, I'm I'm a more more stiff, rigid, but but grippy mm-hmm. putter. Like I like the prime plastic for my putting, and it's kind of a happy medium in between the two. Um, the pros for the classic for me is in the summer when it's a little hotter out, and that that plastic tends to be a little bit more flexible. That works a lot better for me. Now, in the wintertime, that hard, rigid plastic personally feels awful. Like, yeah. it just, it feels like a brick in your hand, and I don't get consistent releases out of it. So, I'll I'll go back to, like, a, a medium, a blend, or if it's cold enough, I don't know why I'm out there, but a soft. Mm-hmm. Just because I get the similar flights out of it. Um, and I don't have to worry about cracking the disc on the putter on, <laughs> yes. on the, uh, the, the basket or anything like that. So really it just comes down to personal preference. I don't know that there's any like necessarily a pros and cons list between those two plastic types with the exception of, um, weather being involved. But for the most part, it's, it's really just personal preference, what you like. Yeah. I, I would say I like more soft plastic for approaches because it sticks to the ground a little bit Grippier. better. Nice to likes to stay. And you could argue that softer plastic grabs the chains a little bit better, although mm-hmm. I, uh, that that's what s- people seem to think, right? Yeah. But I just, and I talked about this on one of our Instagram TV videos a while back, but if the putter doesn't feel comfortable in my hand, it doesn't matter how well it grips the chains if I'm not hitting the chains. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's why I like the classic plastic. Feel confident with it every time. And if I do hit chains and it spits out, so be it. But at least I gave it a chance. Yeah. I've tried putting with soft putters before, did not do great with them. Yeah, only in the winter. Only when it's cold out will I will I drop down to softer plastic. All right, next one comes from Thad. I recently got a couple of new Wardens in Classic Blend for putting only. I love the feel of the classic, classic Blend in my hand, but I'm noticing that they are getting beat up very quickly from hitting every other part of the basket but the chains. <laughs> Is there a plastic similar to the Classic Blend that would be more resistant to the dings and nicks I'm seeing in the Classic Blend? Really? Dings in the plas- Classic Blend? Hmm. You don't you don't really see that a whole lot. Must be hitting it pretty hard, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I I think the, your only option if you don't want to see the those dings on it is become a chains. better putter. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Hey, we keep it real. <laughs> don't keep it unreal. Yes. Right. No. Um. You can go with a more premium plastic. You, that's going to hold up a lot longer. But I don't know too many people that like to necessarily putt with that premium, like Lucid or Fusion type plastic. Mm-hmm. Across the board, classic and and blend and and soft are probably going to be pretty similar. I would say soft probably is is less likely to ding up mm-hmm. than like a harder plastic. So maybe if if you just want that that more, um, I don't want to say cheap plastic, but not premium plastic, is is go with a softer plastic. Yeah, yeah. The premium plastic for whatever reason just never clicked with. I don't know if it's it's the grip or the, the mental aspect of it sliding through chains or, or what it is, but yeah. it, it definitely doesn't has never worked. For, it worked for Paul Uliberry and mm-hmm. he put whatever the year that was for, so for worlds when he won yeah. am worlds. But yeah, for the most part, I, I, yeah. All right. This one actually is from Dave. Hello, disc golf answer crew. This is Detroit Dave with a question from the mitten. I have a disc golf buddy who has decided to throw it all away and get married. A big part of his upcoming bachelor party will be getting all the guys together to play a round of disc golf. I was wondering if you had some ideas for possible play formats or other things to do during the round with a large group. I'm expecting 12 plus guys with a very wide gap in disc golf experience. So I want to figure out a good way to play that is fun for all involved and keeps a decent pace of play. Doubles or even triples seems like the obvious answer, but I'm hoping you might have something outside the box we could try. 
Thanks for everything you do and keep it real. Nice. Hmm. With 12 people, that's pretty tough. That's a lot of people. Um, I have played best shot triples a few times and it's actually really fun. Um, especially if, you know, if you've got some newer people, so everyone gets to throw, but you don't have to worry about, you know, taking their shots or whatever. They don't have to feel bad about not being very good at uh, disc golf if they haven't played a whole lot. Um, but you might also do just like a different challenge on um, different challenge on each hole. Like we'll, you know, flip for teams on one hole. And then for this hole, um, uh, I have to choose a, a disc out of Eric's bag to throw. Mm-hmm. He has to choose a disc out of mine. Um, for this hole, you can only throw forehands for this hole. You can only throw uh, backhand rollers, stuff Opposite like that. hand. Yeah. Just yeah. Weird stuff, stuff like that. I've always found that to be really fun. Um, and yeah, just kind of takes the pressure off because nobody's going to be good at all that stuff. Correct. So anyway, that's what I would try. I agree with that. Yeah. You don't have any other game. There's, I mean, triples is always fun. And I, I think it's always fun. And it's always unique. Um, something that came up, what I'd like to try with a duel sometime, a dynamic duel, if we have a, a bunch of team members in town, mm-hmm. is three on three alternate shot. Ooh, that'd be cool. So you just start on the whole one, whoever's on whole one, and then boom, from there on, it's just alternate shot all the way through. That'd I think awesome. that'd be really cool. That'd be awesome, yeah. It, I think it would help even the playing field, too, is, depending on who all is there. But something like that, just make up your own games, like like Robert was saying. And uh, there, there's a there's a card game out there called Ripped, mm-hmm. Ripped Revenge. You can kind of, you can either buy that or you can do it yourself, make your own, and uh, kind of use that as a, as a kind of a more fun learning curve. And, and learning new shots. It, it's it's pretty cool, actually. It, it kind of takes the the uh, the competition out of it, so to speak. I like it. He likes it. Uh, let's see. Next one comes from Malachi. 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 That can't be right. M-A-L-A-C-H-I. Malachi. Malachi. <laughs> I thought it was that, but I was like, he's joking. Like, like surely he's joking. <laughs> sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, that really got me. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. Malachi. I'm sorry, Malachi. Malachi. <laughs> that is Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can you do but laugh at yourself? Because everybody else will be laughing as well. Uh, Malachi says. And then go says, home and cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then turn off the cameras and cry. I think the Emac truth in my bag. Oh, wait. What? I think the Emac truth in my bag. And I was thinking of changing all my mids to Emax. Yes. What plastic would you recommend for a stable, straight, and understable shot? P.S. My science fair project was with the Emax tree. Nice. What? Very cool. Malachi, Send that in. Yeah, I was going to say, let us know more about it. Yeah. We'll give you a blue ribbon, 100%. Oh, yeah. I'll give you that. Um, okay, so most stable is obviously going to be moonshine. Um, this is odd. This is in, in plastics that are readily available. Yep. You know, I'm not, I'm going to kind of exclude yeah, the lucid X and the lavas yeah. and all that, but, uh, the lucid is it, lucid or moonshine is going to be your go-to more overstable to straight flyers. Uh, if you're looking for something more understable, I recommend fusion, or if you want to go even more understable biofusion, the biofusion is going to beat in a little bit quicker and end up being more of a, a turnover mid. Um, which is what I love about that disc and across the board as far as plastics go, because you can have one mold of the same, just different plastics in the bag. Like the Emac, you can have a moonshine for my more stable shots. Or for me personally, I carry about four lucids. And if you have ever played around with me or watched me play, you'll see I th- I tend to throw the same one over and over and over and over on every shot. Yep, just when you're feeling it. Because it's so angle sensitive for me, I can, I can put it on that, that, that Anheuser shot and let it turn to the right. I can, I can get it to Heiser and get it to go straight, whatever I needed to do. That is why I put my name on that disc. So yeah, it turns out it's a pretty good, disc. it's a good one. It's not bad. Very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Malachi has another question. Malachi, <laughs> Malachi. Malachi has another question. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, he said, this one's for Bobby. I want to know how you decided on a trespass for your driver. I throw, Mainly snow line ballistas for my drive, but it depends on how I'm feeling that day. That depends on what driver I throw. So for me, the trespass, the reason I selected it is because I don't remember exactly why I selected it. Uh, but the reason I really like it is because it's, it is my stable over stable driver. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's a little bit of wind or I, I want to make sure it comes back to the left, I throw the trespass. 
Um, I have a biofusion trespass that I can get it. If I throw it just right, I can get it to stand up and give me a little more distance. Then I have a, hy- a hybrid fusion one, I think it was. Mm-hmm. That, that Well, probably not hybrid fusion, but oh. probably just hybrid. Okay, the hybrid is uh, kind of a pink creamy color. Mm-hmm. and that's the bar the one, stamp. Yeah. The bar stamp hybrids. And that's the ones that I try to throw as straight as possible and then know it's going to give me the fate. Man, the Trespass Uh-oh. is such a good disc. Oh, it's so versatile for so many people. It is so good. When I was in Texas this weekend at my parents' house, I have boxes of discs down there. Mm. A lot of old discs, too. But um, I found a, a, a pre-Sweden Lucid Trespass hey. with a Digi stamp, and I... Put it right in the bag, yeah. and I was throwing that's, that's it all straight in all day sure. at Waco. Oh gosh, it just Heiser flip dream. It's mm. awesome, so good. Yeah, and I even sometimes whenever um, I can do, I I throw it uh, in a, on an Anheuser because I know it's going to come back. Because if mm-hmm. I got if I got to shape that mm-hmm. shot little flexor, a little bit, yeah, yeah, such a good disc. All right, next one comes from um, Anonymous Malachi. Let's see, Anonymousa. Anonymousa. I hope I never forget Malachi. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I'm never going to. That's his name from now on. All right. He says, during uh, the final round at Ledgestone. Oh, I'm sorry. He, he or she said, because it is anonymous. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, during the final round at Ledgestone, I happened to be sitting near the legend, Robert the Hair McCall. Ooh. I didn't know I was a legend. And Thank while you. I was too intimidated by the hair to go say hello, I thought I overheard you say something about the crowd yelling when AJ was throwing on hole nine. I didn't hear anything about it elsewhere. Can you share the story? Thanks and keep it real. Um, honestly, that this was so long ago that I don't remember what was happening. Um, I would, if I had a guess based on how the round was going, I think hole nine was probably the bridge hole. Um, that's is the that one, the bridge hole? I think so. I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. That seems right. Um, five, six, seven. Yes, nine is the bridge hole. The bridge. Um, that's the one where AJ was cruising, not having the greatest round, but, you know, still hanging in there on the mm-hmm. lead card. Um, and then threw OB off the tee and then twice from the drop zone. Yeah. Um, it's a backbreaker of a hole. It's it's pretty tough. And AJ, That's a nice way to put it. It's just tough. Like, I mean, I, I threed it the first three times, landed the island all three times, and then just got in my own head really bad the fourth round, and I sixed it. Because I missed the island and then missed as my soon, second. As soon as you missed the island the first time, that's when it's like it's like seventeen. Yeah, you can four, but it just it hurts. Yeah, it yeah. hurts, man. But anyway, um, uh, it, it must have been that I think AJ was getting ready to throw, and there was just some crowd noise behind him or something. I I don't remember to tell you the truth, but I felt for AJ at the time because he was crushing it, and honestly, he handled it better than most people would have. Yeah. You know, being he's so down to earth. Yeah. Being being in control that whole week and just throwing so many good shots and just to have that one bad hole pretty much take him out of contention. Um, he handled it like a champ. And I was walking with him. And he was like, well, that sucks. Well, on to the next one. Yeah. And just man, he handled it like a pro. I, I, I already respected him a lot, but I had a, a lot of respect for the way he handled that situation. So, yeah. All right. So yeah. today is in a special day. If you are a PDJ member. Today was a day that, uh, what, no? No, nothing. Oh, I thought like I was wrong. No. Um, is a ratings update. A ratings update was sent out for today. And uh, so I thought we'd go over real quick to talk about a little bit about our ratings update. So how did your ratings do, Eric McCabe? Mine is in the green. In hey. the green. Always a good thing. Oh, yeah. There's the little box. How, how new is that feature? It's this two updates. Two updates, yeah. So very, very recent. So it's a little thing that, that puts a little green or red box near your... With a number in it. With a number to tell you if you went up or down on your rating. Yes. So you were in the green by how many points? I believe it was four. You are correct. Nice. And I think it's up to 10, 14? 10, 14, yep. 10, 14 Sweet, is man. my... I've been on a roller coaster the past yeah. like five <laughs> years, <laughs> like up and down, up and down, up and down, but... It's expected as much golf as I don't play anymore. So, but no, mine went up. I'm happy with it. Cool. That's, all right. Yeah. Good news. I'll say this for Eric. Right. Uh, he's sitting here, and I would never say this to his face. It's kind of like the office. <laughs> She's a very talented it's artist. Very ta- I would never say that to his face. <laughs> Why wouldn't you say that to her face? <laughs> um, so, great. Eric's rated 1014, but if you come playing Emporia, uh, Eric is shooting 1030 golf every time, if not better. Um, in Emporia. And, and I'm, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> For whatever reason, when we're here, mm-hmm. like you will not I just beat know Eric in these Emporia. courses. Yeah, I mean that's just, just how it is. Yeah. So yes, his rating says ten fourteen. I I think he's a lot better player than that. Um, 
but you know, he just doesn't play nearly as much as before. Yeah. Yeah. But if you catch him on the wrong day, dude, I, I'll I'll go lose by eight. And like I'll play okay. And oh well, here goes Eric. Yep. A million, gone. So anyway. He's gone. It's he, kinda like that he gone. Dixon round when he came in thinking yeah. he killed it and won and I beat him by like eight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Whoops. Just one of the experiences you can have in Emporia. It's yeah. pretty good. So unfortunately my rating went down. Oh. I how went many? down one point. Just oh, one. Um, of course I'm very low rated. I'm at rated eight oh seven. So Keep it in the 800, so. Keep, That's right. <coughs> keep it in the 800. Um, I, I'm curious, though, for 20, now I'm not going to, I can't, I can't say I'm going to play a lot more, but what would it take for my rating to get to like 850? You need to play like. How many events would I have to play? Well, you'd need to play not just events, but you would have to play like sign up for pro and like disc golf pro tour or national tour oh, events. Oh, really? To yeah. get at that, to make it well, jump Well, I mean, just because they're a little more inflated, the, the ratings at what? those particular events. Surely you're not really recommending. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> am. You know how we're doing this kind of what like, what's I it called? What what's it I called? To? What's it called? In the mind. In what's the mind. In the mind. The I want to film an in the mind with Bobby Brown at a <laughs> national at a tour, tour event. Maybe well, GBO. Well, hey, on maybe this, GBO. No. On, on this one, everyone was throwing their high speed discs. I went with my Maverick, <laughs> <laughs> and I got yeah, oh. and, I, and, I, and that'd be awesome. No I, one would want me on their card. And I Everybody it, would want to watch it. that. Video, I would be the though. talk of the tournament. Yes. though. an eight hundred seven rated yes. player showing oh. up. For on a memorial. feature card, like a Jomez feature card too. <laughs> for a second, <laughs> gotta was, happen. For a second, I was listening and I was like, "Yeah, that's cool. That's cool." No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's a um, great idea. Okay, for you to honestly get to eight fifty, yeah. right? You would have to go to a few more tournaments. Mm -hmm. And then I, what I think is the difference between uh, a few strokes around is usually just mental mistakes. It's not like, oh, crap, I threw an awful drive. Um, now I get an extra stroke. Mm -hmm. For me, the difference between my okay rounds and good rounds is how many like short putts did I miss? You right. know, how many inside the circle did I miss? How many gimme shots that I should always make did I miss is is going from 807 to 850 even realistic of course in one year well oh yeah mm -hmm. because within a year, year within a year for not sure. for you because of my because, because of how many tournaments you play so well, that's that's the only reason I would say it but they could weigh really if he goes and plays really well they could weigh really heavily that's true like it had Joe so what are the possible what what, what, card. <laughs> what realistically should I think what I think that I could reach by how, by many, how many events are you trying to play that's what I need to know Realistically, let's say let's say let's you say play I can play six events next year. Okay, six events. You could definitely get to eight fifty. I think so. I really think you could. What if I could only play four events? Yeah, I think it's what all four? just. What if I played one of it? <laughs> what if I just didn't play? <laughs> right. yeah, what, if I, what can I realistically expect my rating to be? I mean, it's all just about how you show up to that event. Like if you, I get that, but but I get the. It's not I, even I, number of events. It could be you could play two events and get to eight fifty. But let's realistically, what do you think? What's a number that I can look so at? Could and you. I could say, yeah. Same. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. What, what happened? Realistically, what could I expect my rating to be if I put just a little bit, it's a little bit more effort into it? Play, was, play. What I played, maybe how many events did I play? I played. Uh, I don't know how many events. Anyway, I didn't play very many at all. Let's say I I, I plan to play four events, four great. sanctioned events, two rounds each, two rounds each. Okay, that that'll be all of your ratings for the year. So those will those will all count. Right? Okay, so what what can I realistically eight twenty five? I feel like you could get to eight fifty. You really? just have to play well. Is there a bet coming on? I feel like I want to like, like you. Have I want to, to challenge myself. This has to be a goal of your like. You have to want. You have to it. want it. That's you can't what I'm just, saying. You can't just say, I, "What can I do to get to eight fifty? And then me tell you, "Go play more events." Like yeah. you got to want this, Bobby. Yeah, that, that's the reason that our bet at me like you. Yes, <laughs> that's remember the that those that good old days. <laughs> I used to yell at Bobby. It's like it's like you said, you know. When you work here, your rating gets worse. I was like, no, it doesn't. And I'm going to prove it because I cared about it. So if you like, if you care to improve it, then I, I'll make a bet on it. I get that. But I'm, I, I almost, cause I almost, part of me wants to play more, just a few more events, not like go crazy, but I want to like document it, like uh, a yeah. video document me going out there and doing stuff with it, practicing in the mind, taking a lesson from you guys. In, yeah. In the mind. In the I mind. want an in the mind, Bobby Brown. <laughs> yes. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Okay. So we'll, we'll discuss this a little later. I'm putting, I'm saying 850. I think you could you do think it. 850. Yes. Because, okay. So here's the difference going from 950 to a thousand is way harder than going from 800 to 850. There are just more strokes out there. It's, Johnny V brings up a good point. It'll be hard because it'll be, it'll, you have to wait until the bad ones fall off. Sure. But, but that's that, a year. If you're giving yourself a year. a year, just don't have any more bad ones. Oh, Tyler said I was 820 
this year and played six events this year, and my update went to eight eighty six. Uh, dude, big jumps are totally possible yeah. when you're when you're where you are. You, right. They are totally possible. All right, well, let's we'll, do some thinking and we'll talking. Do some thinking. Maybe on the next episode, we'll we'll come to a conclusion. So do it. All right, so let's get back to the questions. Shia LaBeouf. Don't let your dreams be <laughs> dreams. <laughs> I'm teasing Robert. Let's talk about your rating. Oh, I honestly forgot. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I, um, I I improved again. So Robert improved by how many uh, how many strokes? How many points? Three. Three, Three points. points. I went up ten. I went from ten oh three to ten oh six. That's another career high for me. So that was really cool. So All right. That means I'll buy the queso as well as, as the. You were already buying the queso. Is this ever happening? We need to go down there. What's how? What this weekend? Plans. This Anybody? Weekend, this weekend's bad. Why? Okay, I can go. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend's bad. No, okay, I can go. All right. Well, you convinced me. Why, why would it be bad? I mean, it's supposed to be like in the 50s, I think. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, that sounds good. The only thing is, it's a three hour drive. Yeah. And so we'd have to three hours play real quick and then go eat and then three, three hour drive back. I would really like to play Hops and Heisers, but if it's, if we're going to be Torchies instead, like I'm there. All right, we'll talk about Eric's it. There too. This, yeah. this weekend could be the Torchy's Taco yes. weekend. Um, I am excited, though. Uh, once the Piney Woods from last year falls off, I thought it was going to fall off when I signed up this year, but they're just close enough that I have both of them on my rating. I average like 980-something at that event. So once that falls off, I could jump up even a little bit more. Gotcha. Well, believe believe in Bobby the dude. The dude's being harsh on Bobby Brown on he everybody today. Say. Dude, he no. says Bobby... Bobby could totally shoot over 850 consistently. Yeah. Oh, it's he just, has three runs. Checking out my my uh, ratings there, huh? No, he says, He's checking oh, out my sorry, stats, four. dude. Here's 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 what it is. What you what you you want to make this interesting, the dude? Here's here's what it is, <laughs> dude. There's a dude, certain like the dude. Th- there's a certain capability that you have. I, I think there's say you go play your absolute best mm-hmm. right now. I would say if you played flawless, you're probably looking at about 950 or so. What do you think? Is that too high or is that about right? It's probably on the up, upper, upper yeah. high, maybe, high side. Maybe but mid, mid 920s, yeah. 930s, somewhere yeah. in there. So that's, I've that's seen playing, Bobby play some good golf. That's playing perfect. So let, right. let's call it 930. Let's, hold but, on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's call okay. it 930. So if you want to average 850, that gives you eight mistakes that you can make during a round and you can still play better than 850. Mm-hmm. Right. So really all you have to do is just limit those mistakes. That's all you got to do. Gotcha. And putt right. well. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk right. about it in the uh, interested. after show trademark. After show. Okay, no, sorry for Johnny. Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> All right. Next question. It comes from Daniel. He, this is on shot selection. Hi, my first disc. Oh, hi, my disc guru trifecta. Nice. <laughs> this time I have a question about choosing the right disc and in some way the right shot. Every pro, well, almost anyone I play with usually have some really overstable molds. I, on the other hand, struggle very much throwing these kind of overstable discs. I really can see the benefit of having this shot in your arsenal. So to the question, is it easier for someone like me to get a good flight by power up, powering up an overstable mid range or powering down an overstable fairway? Mm. That's that's personal preference. It, um, yeah. Eric and I kind of see that differently. Most of the time he wants to throw uh, like if he can throw a mid but it's it's pretty stretchy. Then he'll just say he'll just power down a fairway, mm-hmm. especially now. Yeah, like that. I'm getting older and not trying to rip as mm-hmm. hard on my on my mids. But however, it used to be, I was a mid guy. That's all I would ever throw. I didn't even carry fairway drivers. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good way to play. Yeah. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I'd say I'm kind of the opposite, especially when it comes to putters. If I can throw a putter, I'm throwing that. I would rather throw a putter hard than throw a mid range soft. Um, but then when it comes to fairways and mids, I don't have that same distinction. I don't mind throwing a fairway soft as opposed to a mid range. Um, but that that's just personal preference, whichever one you feel like you can control better. Mm-hmm. Agreed. All right. Next question comes from JT. Hey, disc golf answer crew. This is JT from the great state of Texas. Again, nice. uh, I want to thank you for answering my previous questions. They were a big help. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do for the sport. Um, so one thing I can't stand is when people comment or call in on your page and say how much they don't want to hear about your personal lives. You guys should just, you know, stick to answering the questions. I love hearing that side of the story. Uh, I love hearing things behind the scenes. I love hearing different stories from your disc golf, uh, careers. 
Um, so I want to stick it to the all business, no fun people that I probably wouldn't want to be stuck on a card with. Uh, <laughs> and hear about your favorite disc golf memories ever. Um, Eric's mm. probably the world championships. I'd love to hear what it felt like walking up to that last putt in 2010, knowing you're about to win it and yada, yada. Uh, and Bobby and, uh, Robert and, or anyone else who may be in, uh, the studio today, I'd love to hear one of your favorite memories about disc golf, uh, and the different fun things that you've done in your life. Um, anyways, thank you so much for taking my question. You guys are awesome. Uh, and yeah, stick it to the boring people. Uh, as always, keep it real, uh, and keep doing what you guys do. Thanks. Nice. So let me address that real quick. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. I take those comments with a grain of salt. They do kind of get you. I've been doing this for a long time and I've seen lots of comments on YouTube and things like that. It does kind of get to you, but I do it just as in anything in life. You're always going to get those people that you're not going to. There you just somebody, can't please everybody. Right. You can please some of the people all of the, You can please all of the people. What is it? Some of the time. You can please some of the people all the time. But you can't please all the people. So anyway. Sometimes people that. like you. Some, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> but I know that the majority of you guys love what we do. So we yeah. will keep on doing it. So I, I kid and I'm sarcastic because that's my way of kind of releasing without like going off. Without being sad. Yeah, without being without sad. Without crying. <laughs> right. So, Holding the tears back. You know, so my way of, of dealing with it is being uh, sarcastic and, and joking about it. So so anyway, his qu thank you for that comment, though, JT. Yeah, I love it. it. It makes me it gives me good fuzzies inside for sure. Good fuzzies. So fuzzies. much I have to cough them out. Good fuzzies. fuzzies. Good fuzzies. You and Malachi talking about Me, Malachi good fuzzies. It's better than the bad fuzzies. Malachi. So those, yeah. After Torchy's tacos, you can get the bad fuzzies. Well, there there is a fuzzies tacos. Malachi. There is. I want to do a fuzzies and Torchy's uh, showdown. Yeah. That's, that's an easy choice. I've had both a lot. I want to have. I want to try it. So. Good luck. So, so he was right, Eric. I got to imagine your most favorite disc golf memory has to be By that far. moment you make that last putt and you realize you are a world champion. It was a drop in, but. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. That was by far my fondest memory of disc golf. Um, and it was, it was weird. Like it was, I, you know, I'd played in many events when I won the worlds. I'd won a bunch of tournaments. I'd won a major before that. Um, but, uh, Coming down the stretch, like the last six, even the last six holes of that final nine, it just seemed something was different. Mm -hmm. Like overload of confidence, like yeah. not a doubt in my mind. Like made every putt. I knew what was happening. I was winning that tournament. It didn't matter. No matter, I, I was going to win. And that whole it, five or whatever putt, 40 footer yes. or whatever. Just, just in the freaking buckets. middle. Oh, yeah. yeah that was it so felt so good to hit that. And, and just, just all around, just playing, just out of my mind that whole weekend was, was an awesome experience. And honestly, it probably took, I don't know, <laughs> a couple months to even sink in right. that I was, that I want. I remember, I remember winning and then going, I didn't have my phone in my bag. Usually I have my phone in my bag. Mm -hmm. I left it in the RV and I remember going back to the RV and there being like Just 86 text messages. And, and I was like, Oh my God, what's going on? Here? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, by far hands down my best experience. That's awesome. That's super duper cool. Uh, I think my most memorable one wasn't a tournament that, that I won, uh, but it was my highest rated round ever. Mm -hmm. I, um, so I had knee surgery in 2014, uh, and it took me almost two years to get back to playing disc golf. It was like, it was the worst, man. I just uh, like, I remember you coming out and yeah, I still came out to GBO yep. and hung well, out, you, well, came, you came to out stadium experiences. I remember, uh, Cedar Hill was one of them. Oh, uh, it's round, it was at Round Rock. Was it Texas oh, State? Oh, uh, Texas State. You were in a wheelchair. I was. You, that was fresh, I think. Yeah, I, was I remember pretty, jamming a putt and yeah, going over and giving you nuts. Like, yeah. My man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that uh, it was just not not a whole lot of fun. I didn't know if I was going to be able to play again or be able to play to the level that I was at before. Um, but at the beginning of 2016, I was like, man, I've been sponsored. Didi has had so much faith in me. I'm just going to go try to play tournaments again mm -hmm. and just see what happens. Um, I was rated a thousand at the time from two years before, uh, knowing that I wasn't a thousand rated player. When I walked up to that tournament, it was a tournament at Zebos. Um, I actually played okay. Considering my max distance was three twenty or so three thirty with a King on full flight. Like that's as far as I was throwing mm -hmm. at Zebos. 
and it was a long layout. That so, struggle there. Yeah, it was it was hard. So the first the the first round there were some shorter pins, and um, I made two big mistakes. They both cost me two strokes, and so I shot a nine fifty nine or something. I was like, hey, first round back, I'll take that. Yeah, with almost no run up, made made a lot of putts. That was cool. The second round, like I said, I kid you not, I was throwing three thirty max. I missed one putt, um, and that was a that was a, a par four that I parred, and. Every other shot I threw just about as good as I could. Nice. And it shot a 1063. It's which, pretty solid. Yeah. I'd never shot in the 1050s before that. <laughs> Healthy. And so it was just, I don't know. That was just kind of crazy. I jumped from like ninth to third. It was a B tier. Who cares if I won or whatever? But that was like, I don't know. That was really encouraging to me. You don't have to throw super far. You don't have to do all this stuff well, as long as your basics are. I mean, I made every putt I looked at the whole day. Is that uh is that to date your highest rated round? Still still my highest, ten sixty three. I pretty good. I haven't had another ten fifty since. I have I've had a, a few ten forties. Mm-hmm. So um but yeah. And Solid. then uh, I, I would say my other one was just getting to play USDGC this year. That was mm-hmm. that was probably one of my favorite disc golf experiences. Walking up to seventeen, taking an eight, feeling like I was gonna die. And uh <laughs> and then that'll do it. Yeah. And then, you know, that last round, putting it together to where I, I birdied, I think, four of the last six to jump into cash. That was just, that was super fun. I loved yeah, it. So that's cool. What about you, Bobby? Well, My favorite. You've got a lot of pretty good experiences. I, I've too. had some really good experiences. I mean, everybody knows, well, I'm pretty sure everybody pretty much knows my story of, you know, getting my dream job with DD and, and, or discovering disc golf and doing media and stuff and, and getting to travel and stuff like that. And then landing my job at DD. Um, but I, I would say the mo- one of the most memorable ones that I that immediately came to my mind was when I first started. I did a lot of stuff for free or for or for discs um, or for very very cheap. I mean, I would drive eight hours in an expedition. Mm-hmm. I remember your that's expedition. The, that's the only yep. vehicle we had that could travel that far because my other one would not make a two hour drive that I had. So I would take the family car, the expedition. My wife gave kind of gave me her blessing and to do that. But anyway, I would get paid very little and I would be eating up gas, but I knew I was investing into it. I was, I was making the leap. And I remember I went out one uh, to the memorial and I went out with disc golf planet and John mm. Dusler had mm-hmm. had me hired me to go out there. And I remember it was, the, it was over and he had me record uh, the award ceremony on the camera and I had been there the whole week. It just, it was amazing. I was loving, it. I couldn't believe it. I was traveling for disc golf. Someone had paid to have me go out to Arizona and film disc golf. And I was having the time of my life. And he walked up and said, thank you so much for everything you did. And he hands me a check. And I looked down and I'm like, holy crap, I got, and it wasn't like a terror. It wasn't like amazing, but it was a lot more than I'd been ever paid for at disc golf. And I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to, I can do this for a living and, 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 and do this awesome stuff and do things I love and I'll actually get paid for it. And uh, so anyway, that, that's gotta be one of my highlights of my disc golf career. All right, let's go on to the questions uh, to another question. This is from Daniel again. This is hi, Bobby E N R. Hey, at least he said Burr. my name. Yeah. Burr. Uh, I struggle a lot with my, I, putt- Bobby Burr. <laughs> my <lucky. laughs> I, put- I struggle a lot with my putting, especially with the inconsistency of my putts missing both left and right. I am primarily a spin putter have tried push putting, but eat with even worse results. I know filming yourself is the best way, but I go for the next best thing. Do you guys have some quick tips to on how, on how to improve. I have a routine that I try to run every putt and I try to follow through. I know I need to work on these two more, but is there anything else I can do? Good question. One of the biggest things you kind of mentioned it already is the follow through, but that is the probably absolute most important as far as spin putting goes, making putts, missing putts. That's I know if I'm missing putts left or right or up or down or, or no matter where I'm missing them, it's it, it's 90% be, because I'm not following through. Yeah, I would say that was the the, the biggest um, biggest fault of mine. Uh, something else you could absolutely try to do is look at what, what you're putting with. Um, if you if you tend to be missing more on the left side or more on the right side, you know maybe try something a little bit more stable, maybe something a little less stable, a little straighter flying putter. Um, I know that that is that has helped me in the past just kind of almost like a fresh start, you know, and build that confidence back up with a with a new putter. Um but I'm the king of of putters. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Changes them out a lot. Yeah, quite Pl- a bit. Plenty of quite new ones. Bit. But I, I think I'm on what I'm putting with now is is going to be my my go to for the next few years. Prime Judge. Yep. 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 Pretty good. Yep. So anyway. All right. Next one comes from Malachi. Malachi. <laughs> no, that actually it does from Malachi Arzola. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I saw that Ricky Wysocki swings the disc out away from his body, which is known as a wide rail. Yep. I think, but I was wanting to know why, and do you recommend this to a junior player? Hmm. If you've got lengthy arms. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... The, he, he's so lanky. The, he's, yes, very long arms. The wide rail works really well. Um, I think if you are... <clears throat> If you do have long limbs or you're really committed to keeping the disc outside your body a lot, mm-hmm. sure, it could work out well. If you were talking about a junior learning, though, I, I don't know if I would teach the wide rail specifically. I would try and just work on getting to that that power pocket you know, where the angles are correct. Um, where they reach back, I think it's just going to be more of a natural thing instead of intentionally saying, ah, oh, I'm going to reach back way over here. Mm-hmm. Just kind of let them reach back, but just make sure they're getting to that right, right angles. And yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. what I would teach. Yeah. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. 90% of the time. All right. Let's go to, Oh, another one from speak pipe. This is from Timothy again. Timothy. How's it going? DGAM fam. Timothy on go again. And speaking of ratings, I uh, had a question on when it would be a good time to move up to playing open instead of advanced. So I'm currently rated 969, and I've been finding out recently at tournaments that I'm usually rated 15 to 20 points higher than everyone else in the amateur field. And, for example, at the last tournament, I was rated about 30 points higher than everyone else, and I would have had to shoot the hot round, all three rounds, just to barely shoot better than my current rate. So when is it a good time to move up and start playing in open tournaments? And, uh, yeah, what are you guys' thoughts on moving up? Obviously, I wouldn't be moving up just because of player ratings, because player ratings aren't everything. And I don't really have that many tournaments under my belt. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this, and thanks. What are your thoughts on this? I don't think you should move to open. <laughs> I don't think you should move to open because someone else is pressuring you to, unless it's Kevin, in which case you definitely did it because we pressured him to. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Your, in your face, Kevin. Um, you saw <laughs> <Sucker>. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. Uh, across the board, I would say um, that you need to move whenever. Like the reason I moved was I was tired of making the same mistakes and, and then having good results. Like, I would go play and be like, holy crap, I missed so many shots. I missed so many putts. And then still still finished in the top few in the field. Um, yeah. And I just, I liked having the challenge of, um, I, I, I liked having the challenge of watching better players throw shots that I couldn't throw or, yeah. or seeing what's possible on the course. That's why I moved to open. Um I think it's a person to person thing. I don't think there's a, like a certain time that every single person should say, this, this is, is when, when I'm moving. This is yeah. when I'm moving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at on that. Yeah. I agree with that. It's, it's tough. I mean, for me, I knew when it was time to move up. I mean, if I guess if you're starting to question it, if you're, if you're playing more and more advanced events and you find yourself um, always toward the top, mm-hmm. or if you find yourself, Man, I really didn't play that well, but at least I won. You know, those are definitely uh, situations when you should probably be moving up and playing with better players. And I, for one, can speak for sure as when I moved up, I noticed an increase in my game yeah, you almost improved. instantly. Yeah. So something else to think about. Yep, I agree. Next one is from uh, Sir Shanks a lot. <laughs> Of House Camelot. Um, House. I currently throw a fluid Midshine Truth and they are money. I was curious how they compare to Emacs since the fluid are getting harder to find. I've never really thrown the fluid Truth. Have you? No. You throw it? No, but I think they're pretty comparable. Pretty comparable to the, like I would say, a Lucid or maybe a Fusion. Mm-hmm. Correct. It's obviously going to be a little more stiff, but pretty comparable, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. 
Uh, next one again is from Greg. Uh, I live in the Denver area and I'm wondering how a higher elevation affects disc flight. Any difference in distance or stability at a mile high? Well, definitely more stable. Yes. Yeah. And I, I feel like I should know the, the physics behind that, but I think there's something about the, the thinner air and all that stuff. But what I do know is science. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like that guy who yeah. the, the, science. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do know that my discs that are usually understable at elevation are now straight and my stable discs are now like meat hooks and my meat hooks are now unusable. Yes. So I, I always, beef. if I'm going to any sort of elevation, I like to take just a couple of more understable discs and then know that I'm going to be use, using discs that I'm not used to doing certain things for like, I, I'll be using a Maverick for pretty straight shots at that point instead of long turnovers. Mm-hmm. I'm using Explorer for something that finishes left consistently uh, instead of a felon or something like that. Yep. All right. This one is from Jason. Bobby Cool Daddy Slick Breeze, Emac, and Robert Mr. G, because you're rated over a grand again, McCall. Nice. Uh, just found the DGAM podcast in the last few days and have really enjoyed listening to it. Thanks. Uh, so thank you guys for this. Um, I got back into playing recently and have been working on my form. And thanks to Danny's videos on technique and timing, um, I've been able to diagnose a lot of issues with my form, like early reach back, reaching back too high, which is causing dipping, and uh, trailing my arm behind my body on the pull through, just to name a few things. Um, so I've been doing field work and working through these, and I've noticed my average drives with my orcs going up from like 310 to about 340, uh, which is the good part. Uh, but the bad part is that I've found that my release point on some of the longer throws uh, going way to the right, um, like 40, 50 feet offline as a, a right hand, backhand thrower. And uh, I've never thrown this far before, so I don't know if this is normal and I just need to adjust my aim point on the course um, or if it's a timing issue that I need to fix. Um, and if it is a, uh, an issue that I need to fix, do you have any tips or drills that would uh, help me get back online? Um, and also, uh, I don't have any dynamic discs in the bag right now. And I think that needs to change question. Uh, so (laughs) what drivers would you guys recommend for someone at my power level? Uh, thanks for the podcast and keep up the good work. All right. Thank you, Jason. So what, what, what say you guys? Awesome. So we have a, uh, similar driving issue you and I, uh, and that is uh, a lot of times I get my shoulders out in front of my arm, uh, which, which people call (laughs) rounding. That means that I, I've got the disc too close to myself, and instead of letting my arm and elbow lead, uh, I'm kind of leading with my shoulders. Mm-hmm. At this point, I've done it for so long that um, it's hard to change it like At this immediately, point, yeah. like really fast. I've been, I've been trying to work on it, and um, yeah, just putting, putting in some effort to correct that, but it's, it's difficult for sure. Um, oh, for, I, sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For uh, sure. So... <laughs> One of the difficulties that I've noticed when I'm trying to be really intentional about getting that elbow out in front is that I'll have the same thing as I'll release too far to the right. And that's because I'm used to the disc feeling like it's coming out at a certain place. But now that my arm is out in front instead of my shoulders, that place is more right than I'm used to. Um, so what I would what I would work on for you is really slowing down um, the, the throwing motion mm-hmm. and then accelerating through. So instead of going fast, 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 fast throw, um, slow down and make sure that that last step is starting slow. And then you're finishing fast and let the disc come out of your hand on its own. Don't think about letting the disc go. Um, just accelerate on that straight line. And your goal is, especially if you're working on this in a field, your goal is to look at a tree and say, this is where I want to release. And then you just stand still and throw at that spot until you're hitting that spot consistently. And wherever the disc goes after that, who cares? Because what you're working on is release point. Um, I do think that's a common problem to have when you're getting that arm out away from your body and getting those angles better to release a little bit more to the right. So it's just going to take repetitions, really. Repetition. You'll see improvement. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Almost always when you work on form, you get worse before you get better. Yeah. And drivers that you would recommend for him with his arm speed. Um, I mean, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but the trespass is just such a great disc and it, it kind of, I don't want to say it, it, it shows your, your, your bad form. Sure. But it, it can, 
Yeah. Um, kind of, I, I personally think the trespass is one of the most underrated discs. It's super, not good. just in our lineup, but just in general, it's it just such a great flying disc. So I, I would recommend the trespass, giving it a try. I think it's going to be for you a little bit. It will definitely be faster than the orc. Yep. Um, but I think it'll probably have a similar turn fade on it. It mm-hmm. might be a little bit more overstable out of the box, but not a lot, not a whole lot. So, yeah. Excellent. All right, we'll hit the hour mark uh, on our episode, so we're going to end that. But if you're watching on YouTube, hang out for a little bit. We'll sit and chat with you for a little bit. What did I did I forget? Something? No. Well, oh. we didn't really talk about the no shave November. Oh, you're, thank oh, you yeah. for yes, thank you for reminding disc golf me, answer Eric. beards. <laughs> yes, disc golf answer man, uh, no shave team. We uh, have uh, excellent news on our fundraising. We actually have three days left. I believe the official is three days left, and we actually hit our uh, go and beat it by $85. And we're still not done because I still have yet to donate because I was waiting until the end of the month to kind of look at my budget and see how much I would normally have spent on that and then decide what amount and I double want it. to. And then I'm going to try. I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, go <laughs> then I'm going to call Malachi and see what he would do. I, I got to be, I got to, I got to be honest. Uh Oh, I don't, I feel cheated this November. Why? Because if you go back to last like three years yeah, and look at my beard, right? It's been pretty epic power beard. Yeah. And right now, I mean, we shaved everything off. That was cool. My right. mom really loved it. Everything. You know. <laughs> God, everything. You are fired. <laughs> I, and, and right now, and yours as well. It's like yeah, it's normal. Just, it's like a beard. It's like normal. It's like, I look normal. Yeah, come like, on, nobody man. wants to look normal. Like, no, I'm trying to have super trying beard like, now. I'm trying to, like, do things. Like, <laughs> let's. Listen here, beard. Like, Movember. Like, nothing but the stash next year. Okay, <clears> next year we'll do the. Because we'll do I, no I just feel, I feel so cheated. Like, yeah. everybody's like, oh, hey, Eric. You're the same. <laughs> yeah, it's just thanks for doing. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like I don't yeah. feel like we're, we're yeah. really doing our part. No, I get it. I get it. Like I'm a hundred percent down for Movember next year. We're doing for it for real. After All I right. after I shaved everything. Well, oh, I forgot you have to shave everything. That was my least oh, yeah. favorite. No, thing you I've have done to shave. While. Like yes, it, I, only I hated it. I hated it. But then I took the picture with the mustache, and I was yeah. like, "Darn it, I love a mustache, man! Dude. Come on, <laughs> yes." <laughs> so next year we have to do it because I feel super cheated. We'll do the November where you have to grow uh, only your mustache also so. shockingly shay seemed like she was in support of just the mustache she was like that's awesome i oh. think i think she was joking maybe after day two she might have been like okay, yeah yeah i think idea. it's like a novelty thing right. yeah next year it'll be a 30-day novelty well, denise hates it i'll tell you that right now Rip. oh yeah she's not gonna like the it mustache yeah oh, just okay. the mustache but <laughs> is that why you want to do it? <laughs> maybe Maybe. <laughs> but no, right. we have to do it. Sorry, next Denise. year. All right, next year we'll do it. But this year we beat our goal, which is awesome. You guys did an amazing job, and I'm sure there'll be a little bit more. We have three days left. So if you want to donate to us, even if you didn't participate, you can still donate to our team at no hyphen shave.org slash team slash D G A M. I'll try to put remember to put links in the description of this particular episode. And you can donate. And this of course goes toward uh the No Shave November fight against cancer. Uh, so you can read more about it at no hyphen shaved. I wish they wouldn't have made that no hyphen, no hyphen shave.org uh, website for sure. Uh, the big question is, are we going to shave him off? Are you going to say, well, I, I know Robert's not going to shave his. I you, know Robert's <laughs> not going to shave his. Are you going to clean it up though? Malachi and I are going to bet on first? it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I'll probably leave it for a little while. For probably a little let bit. it ride. I think I will. Yeah. I think let I'm going to ride. Yeah, I'm going to let it ride. Uh, okay. What are we in Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let it ride, man. Uh, I'll, I'll probably leave this for a little while until the mustache is back to where like it's more the same length as everything else. And then trim that to all the same length and then just go. It's just, I'm just going to a super beard. I'm not shaving till the memorial. Nice. Dude, last year you're really last year. Beard remember was, remember the memorial beard yeah. last year? Yeah. It was just rocking. I'm not gonna go that far. So man. All right, so, so that's our update. Uh we'll let you guys go. Hang on there for a little bit, Mr. YouTube's people. Mr. YouTube's and, uh, but if you're <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. So uh if uh, you're on the audio and you're like, dang it, I want to take part of the fun YouTube stuff, make sure you tune in live if you can. If not, then just enjoy the audio version. We will see you guys on the next show. Peace.